The last question by Isaac Asimov is a colossal short story that is so much ahead of its time. It tackles philosophical and religious considerations which will always be pertinent. The main idea the story revolves around is the notion of entropy. Entropy is very well summarized by a character in the story, Gerald, when he describes it as the running dune of the universe. Entropy refers to this universal constant whereby everything runs towards decay. It ranges from some of the simplest things like when you get your groceries and put an apple on the table after one day, after two days it starts to rot. To even more complex things like if you fill a glass with water and then you pour the content of the first glass into another you will have less. Pour it into a third glass and you'll have even less. Based on the same law of entropy, humans weaken and die, empires crumble, excitement turns into boredom, and everything runs down. Just the idea that this is a constant in the universe and that nothing escapes it is order. And whoever says order says an orderer. Probably. The short story follows the development of computers and artificial intelligence throughout billions of years, during which this artificial intelligence would create extraordinary things, but would always fail, except at the very end, to answer this one question of how we could reverse the law of entropy. At the end of the story, there is an unexpected, magnificent twist. By 2061, a powerful AI computer called Multivac is responsible for scientific research, for manufacturing, for transportation and for regulating all aspects of life. The computer does everything perfectly and more efficiently than any human can aspire to. Humanity has reached staggering levels of development. But there's one hurdle that still halts progress and it's energy. There is only so much petrol under the ground. And then on May the 14th, 2061, the artificial intelligence Multivac succeeds in finding an alternative to petrol. It successfully applies the concept of the Dyson Sphere. It's a very interesting concept first imagined by English author and philosopher Olaf Stapledon. The idea is that by building a spherical structure that engulfs and harnesses energy directly from the sun, we can access and use the tremendous power that emanates from the sun. The sun is a grand source of energy. Finding a way to exploit all that power is a game changer. This invention changes everything for humans. Energy is no longer a worry. Think of all the possibilities this opens up. In an underground facility, two engineers, Adele and Lupov, who are directly involved in the Multivac program, meet up, have a couple of drinks and start light-heartedly talking about how the world has become completely different with this new gigantic technological leap. Adele tells Lupov that never will energy be an issue for humans. Lupov disagrees. He says that Yes, it is impressive. Yes, energy will no longer be a problem for humans for a long time. But to assume that energy will never be an issue, no. The sun, as imposing as it is, has a lifespan. It's the law of entropy. Will come a time when the sun will die. We'll use the same mechanism and harness energy from another star. Yes, sure, but that star too will die. What we can do is prolong the availability of a steady source of energy. But there is always going to come a time when we will run out of stars. Entropy is inescapable. Adele and Lupov debates the issue casually, as casually as two inebriated friends can. Then they decide to settle their agreement by betting $5 and asking Multivac for an answer. That's what they do. And when asked, how can the net amount of entropy in the universe be massively decreased? Multivac says, insufficient data for meaningful answer. The story jumps hundreds of years forward. A family is traveling on its own spaceship heading towards planet X-23. The husband is called Gerard, the wife Geraldine, the daughters Geraldette 1 and Geraldette 2. Quick kudos to the world building here. It looks like hundreds of years from now, this is how naming people will look like. Names with digits. This small family owns a more advanced, more portable version of Multivac. It's called Microvac. The computer is obviously powerful enough to control everything in the ship. The goal of the family strip is already connected to entropy. 
People from Earth are getting away because of overpopulation and the scarcity of resources. The family has an interesting chat. Geraldine tells Gerald that despite overpopulation and the scarcity of resources, humans are okay. They'll continuously keep flocking to new planets whenever their numbers get too big and resources get too scarce. Gerald doesn't agree. He tells her that while there are lots and lots of planets and galaxies, the numbers are finite. Will come a time when the human race will have used all of them due to entropy. All planets will end up dying because of entropy. Gerard at one asks about what this entropy is. And here Gerard tells her it is the running dune of the universe. Gerard's answer disturbs Gerard. He turns to the computer microvac and asks it, how can entropy be reversed and stars be created again? The computer responds, insufficient data for meaningful answer. Time jump? Pass forward to 20 millennia ahead. The new version of the computer is called Galactic AC. It has achieved immortality for humans. They no longer die from disease or old age. This means that population growth is even faster. Two analysts with two interesting names, VJ23X and MQ17J, are discussing how the entire galaxy has only five years before it'll be completely packed with humans. VJ23X says that there are hundreds of billions of galaxies and that there's nothing to worry about. MK17J disagrees and tells him that while hundreds of billions is a big number, it's not infinite, and that at some point humans will have used up all the galaxies due to entropy. They again wonder how entropy could be reversed, they ask the galactic AC and the answer is once again, there is insufficient data for meaningful answer. Another time jump takes us way ahead in the future. Humans cannot detach their minds from their physical bodies. Two minds from two different galaxies meet in space while exploring a new galaxy. They're called Z Prime and D Sub 1. They start to talk about how galaxies are all similar. But then D Sub 1 tells Z Prime that the original galaxy where humanity has started must be different. They don't know what it is. They resort to asking the computer, which is now called Universal AC. It tells them about a galaxy, the Milky Way, but the computer doesn't use its name. D Sub 1 further inquires about which specific star life originated in. The computer tells them that the star has gone supernova, dad. It has become a white dwarf. This triggers Z Prime about the inevitability of death of the old stars and all life. He asks the Universal AC how could this be stopped? The computer says again there is as yet insufficient data for meaningful answer. Towards the end of the story, humans have managed to merge their consciousnesses into one, referred to as man with a capital M. It roams the universe and observes the dying of the stars, the galaxies and everything. The computer is now called the Cosmic AC and man with capital M asks it one final time, how could entropy be reversed? Unsurprisingly, the Cosmic AC responds there is as yet insufficient data for meaningful answer. Man tells it to seek information relevant to the question. The computer tells man that it has been doing so for a hundred billion years and that all the data it has gathered are still insufficient. Man asks it then a new question which is, will there ever be sufficient data to answer the question? The computer responds that theoretically all questions are answerable. At the end, everything in the universe is depleted of energy. Man's consciousness is no exception. It gets absorbed in the computer. It will cease to exist as a conscious entity separate from the computer. But before the absorption is complete, man asks the computer one final question. Is this the end? Can this chaos not be reversed? The answer, there is as yet insufficient data for meaningful answer. Man's individual consciousness extinguishes. AC, the computer, is the only thing that continues to exist in hyperspace. Another concept dear to Asimov. The only thing stopping AC from dissolving itself is that it still hasn't found an answer to the question it's been asked trillions of years ago. It keeps collecting data until it finally finds the answer. But there is nobody and nothing around to be told the answer. AC has the answer to how entropy could be reversed, but there's nobody to listen to the answer. 
However, reversing entropy amounts to generating creation. And this is what AC does. The artificial intelligence pronounces the words, let there be light, and there was light. A statement attributed to God in Genesis. What an ending. Asimov is clearly saying that God is an AI that we created and that after we died with everything else in the universe, this AI that we created created us. This is the cycle of creation. We think of causation as this vertical relationship where a cause leads to an effect. The story presents a different type of causation, one that is circular, where the effect becomes a cause and the cause becomes an effect. The short story is colossal. It covers a period of trillions of years until life goes extinct and starts again. There is a lot we don't know about life, death, the universe, or origin. The story provides a structured system that proposes an answer to all of these questions in a grouping way. The way the story tracks different time periods and how they impacted my science is similar to how the great movie 2001 Space Odyssey does it. Now this video has reached its end, until we meet again, have a great day.